the yellow spot here won't come off. So now after uh, four days, uh, four nights and five days, let's see. Oh my god. <laughs> Finally. Hey, uh, this is Retroburn and this is part three of our stripping paint of Warhammer miniatures video series. It was supposed to end in part two where I showed you that I was very happy with Pine Saw and that it really stripped off the layers of paints on my Dire Avengers. But I decided to show you uh, another batch because the, the first Dire Avenger, this one, had a patch that wouldn't come off the the yellow things here see those wouldn't come off so i decided that uh, i decided to dunk it in for another what it has been like four days and five nights this thing has been in there so yeah i, I would really like to show you what, what would happen if i dove off the cliff's edge the proverbial cliff's edge and you know dunk this in for <laughs> an eternity and see if if it will damage the plastic but i'm glad to say that it didn't, it just stripped off the paint and now we're going to see if the paint here is going to come off because this, oh sorry about that, uh, gotta steady the cam. Because the yellow spot here won't come off. So now after four days, uh, four nights and five days, let's see. Oh my god, <laughs> finally, finally. So yeah, it's, it's, it's coming off, everything is coming off just fine. Okay, so once again guys. Uh, I should warn you that I'm watching this through my smartphone, so my finer and moderate skills are shot. And there's going to be... I'm going to periodically take the figure figurines off the camera just so I could see it with my own eyes. Like now. <laughs> so yeah, it's coming along nicely. And we're, we're not seeing any fusing of parts or anything like that. After this, I'm going to show you the other Dire Avengers that have been soaked there for, I think, three nights and four days. Yeah, three nights and four days. This one was soaked for four nights and five days. So yeah, this was the first batch. Oh, pro tip. I mean, newbie, newbie tip to other fellow newbies. Uh, when you brush and you're recording... Don't brush in the direction that your mic and your phone and your equipment uh, are at because it might damage your electronics. So brush away there in that direction. If there are any droplets, it's going to go that way and just this way, not the not the direction where your mic is hated. Then I have a razor siren and these, these things don't come cheap. Wait, Tim. I'm going to take it off the cam so I can see what I'm doing. So there's still white spots there that cannot be can be removed. Maybe it needs a full week in the goop. No, no, it it has come off. There you go, nice one. I think the black thing here is sort of primer. But I'm glad to report that uh, it, it doesn't melt the super glue or, or whatever the former owner um, used to glue this thing together. Now my only problem are the recesses. I think I'm going to take a wooden stick to get through the... Oh, 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 it has come off. Nice. Awesome. So, yeah, after four days, four days and what, five, five I mean, four nights and five days... We finally managed to coax the stubborn parts to, you know, get off our me. There you go. There you go. I think this piece is nearly done. Oh, forgive the, the, the black thing that's primer. I was priming some Akron terrain the other day. I'm going to make a video about that. Show you how I did it. If you guys are interested in it. If, if, if there are things that I'm doing wrong... Take note that I'm just a Warhammer 40k newbie. You might want to comment in the comment section. That would be of great help to me. Because this is like this is like my first time stripping paint off plastic miniatures. So there are still things in there that I can quite get to. So I think I'm going to get a plastic I mean a wooden stick and then just Get to those parts there. 
Yeah, I, I can't I can't get them it's underneath the rifle there. But whatever we can, you know, reach, there's no problem. They're all they all flake off. Although there are some black parts. I think that's the primer sticking. Or maybe it's from my gloves. Anyway, let's let's rinse this off. There's also white paints in their base, but I'll take care of that later. Off cam. I'll take care of that later off cam. I keep forgetting that I've ramped up OBS noise compression filter all the way up. So if I, you know, if I speak when I'm away from a few inches from my microphone, uh, the mic doesn't pick up my voice. Forgive, so forgive the lapses. Anyway, I think this is this um this figure is done already. There you go. There's no uh, nothing has painted. I mean nothing has melted. It's very plastic friendly. Uh the the cleaner I, I, I used, which is pine saw. You can see the bottle in parts one and two of this video series. So yeah, the the Dire Avengers eyes are still very much detailed. You can see here. So anyway, let's move on to the other models. So here we go. This thing has been soaked for uh, what three days, four nights. So as you can see here, uh, the former owner painted the BL10 collars right over on top of the EN Den collars without even. Uh, attempting to strip the paint. So in part two, I mean in part one, I stopped because I thought I was melting the plastic. But in truth, it was the paint that was melting off. So that had me fooled that I was, I mean, that the pine saw has melted my figurine. So I had to stop. But in part two, I resumed. And now in part three, yep, this is the end game for <laughs> the old layers of paint. I'm going all Avengers on you, Thanos paint. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> there you go. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. The thing is just flaking off. It's not even flaking. It's just like the entire layer is like holding away. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, so, continuing. There you go. I think I don't think you you don't even need to brush this off. Just peel them away like so. Um Wait, this is a f uh, I hope that I don't break this thing off. Okay, here we go. So, yep, very effective, but it's not as quick acting as what you call this 90% isopropyl alcohol because I've been hunting several uh, Warhammer 40k kill team forums. They said that they can just they just soak their their minis in in 90% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, take note that I've never tried that, so if you wanna, disclaimer, <laughs> I have no experience with that, so take that advice at your own risk. But yeah, there there are a lot of proponents of 90% isopropyl alcohol, and they say that, that it's fine and it works faster, and that it doesn't melt the plastic. But yeah, like I've said, I haven't tried that one. But this for me is okay, like, it's not melting the plastic, it hasn't melted the plastic. And all the paint is coming off except for the very hard to reach places. Let's pause and see. There you go. Coated with bubbles. Let's rinse it off. You know, I really have to get another tripod. This thing is very wobbly. 
Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so yeah, the wonder that is Pine Saw. Like, it hasn't even, even um, melted away this very tiny piece of plastic. Very much afraid that I'm going to break this just by brushing. But yeah, with Pine Saw, it, it hasn't even melted this tiny bit. So, yep, this is 100%. I, I can say that this is 100% um, safe for plastic, for stripping paints off plastic miniatures. Although, disclaimer, uh, this, the, uh, these things are Games Workshop plastic. I don't know what the composition of other plastic minis are. If uh, you buy from other vendors or if you've 3D printed your own stuff. That's why I have these toys right here. These are very cheapo things. I've primed them with... Here we go. These are children's toys that I bought for... A pittance. Here we go. Dragon. Rawr! And I've primed them with um, this thing right here. It's Krylon. Paint plus primer. And some say that it covers up all the details, but I think if you're just careful, you want to be obscuring all the, uh, I mean, the details of your plastic minis. Just don't... Just don't spray too near, because that will, what's the term, that that will um, cause your paint to congeal on the details. So maybe you just spray paint about a foot or so away from the, you hold it at arm's length, and then you just spray from side to side. Spray away from the mini first, and then if you can gauge how... I mean, you have to see that once it hits the mini, uh, the the mini should hit the outer periphery of the spray's cone. Because if you go too near to the nozzle, yep, you're going to obscure all the details. So maybe I'll I'll upload a video on that and how I did things. It may not be perfect because I'm just a newbie, but you know maybe it'll help you guys. We're going to scrub this in. Oh wait, uh, after after priming, I also oh sorry about that. I also painted. I also tested out this uh, another. I think brand uh, Sherlock's uh, acrylic lacquer thing. the The teal color is perfect for my uh, Eldari because I was thinking of. You know, having their armor, their the main bits of their armor in blue green. So this was this was supposed to be the perfect color for me. But if you've noticed, uh, don't don't buy lacquer stuff. Anything that's tagged with the the, the lacquer tag, don't buy it because the finish is just too shiny. It's not not flat. It's not matte. It doesn't have a matte finish. So, yep. If you want, maybe if you want a shiny armor, maybe th this color would do, but I don't recommend if you want a flat finish. So that, this, this is a failed experiment. Also, I want a darker teal, not this one. But anyway, after, after, after we've uh, finished cleaning all these Eldar, I'm, I'm going to dunk all these in, maybe just off camera. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll see how the Pine Sol reacts with... Uh, Krylon with Krylon primer and this Sherlock's Sherlock's acrylic uh, lacquer paint because you know for science you monsters <laughs> okay the yellow bits are off thank god and I think this is the the ale dairy with the controversial Rune thing, a magic on his back that I thought that we were using together when we brushed in part two, and we had to stop. I think this is the guy. Let's rinse so we can see the rune on his. What do you call that cloth thing on his back? There you go. It's still there. See, beautiful. Wait, I'm going to take it off camera and see it for myself.
Oh no, this one has the the Eldari ammo magazine. There you. Okay, it hasn't fused anything. Let's rub again. Although, take note, guys, that um, these things are pre-owned, so I don't know what the former owner or owners of these miniatures have been doing with them. So I'm not too sure if, you know, they've been um, friendly to the plastic, because I've noticed that uh, the, the fifth Dire Avenger is really a um, Eldar, converted Eldar Guardian. And I think his, even though it's unpainted, the ammo pack on his back, I think it's fused, really fused. Because of uh, an abundance of super glue on it. So that was, that's, that's really, really bad. Wait, I'm going to take this off cam and see what, what's happening with this rear part. I'm afraid that the same thing has happened to his backpack with the with the other with the fifth dire Avenger. I can see for all the bubbles. Yeah, the details are still there, but I think there's slightly fused together. Although I don't think that's the pine salt's fault, because if it is, these details here should have blurred out. Like, there you go. See that the the iron sights and the shuriken pistol. Are still sharp. Even his soul stone on the helmet. Wait, sorry about that. Still there. See? There you go. Also, his helmet thing. The what do you call this? The the ventilation thing of magics on the side of his cheeks. What's wrong with my camera? There you go. Still there. Also, the soul stones on his shoulder are still there. But the backpack, there's something wrong with it. I think he applied so much super glue that... Yeah. The details aren't as clear as the ones in the front. I don't know what happened there. But it's clearly not the solvent's fault. Because if it is, all these finer details, like this amulet thing here, should have melted away. But all the sharp ridges and the... Hollow areas, the recessed areas, are still very much uh, defined. But I think it did something. I think it was all the super glue that he plastered on the stuff that did that. Anyway, so enough with this figure. Let's go on with the other ones. Here you go. I'm going to take this off camera and see for myself. I think this is the one with the rune. Yeah, this is the one with the rune. If you've been following my channel, this was the figure that induced so much panic in me that I stopped the video in part one. Because <laughs> I thought I was melting stuff. And I was nervously chuckling in that video, if you haven't noticed. But now, because I'm pretty much sure that this is safe, very much my old jovial self again. But before, I was like, oh my god, like, I have to wait another month? Because, um, thank god, currently, uh, money's not a problem because these things on eBay are very cheap, but because I'm from Southeast Asia, every time I order, I have to wait another, a sing uh, I mean, three weeks to, three to four weeks, three to four weeks for my shipments to arrive. So I was like, holy... Does this mean that I have to wait another month for <laughs> me to complete my Eldari kill team? Speaking of completing my Eldari kill team, do you see this box? Do you see this box right here? Do you see this box right here? <laughs> Next vid, you know what's going to happen. So stay tuned for that. Because that, my friend, is a shipment from Games Workshop. Oh, jeez. Uh, pine salt is dripping on the floor. Hope it won't melt my shorts away. That would be embarrassing, you know. Having a um, stripping paint of my nature while the Warhammer play player is stripping himself because <laughs> the solvent has dissolved all its clothes away. That would be. That would be surreal. 
<laughs> like something straight out of the Materium. <laughs> yeah, so... This thing is not... is proving to be easy too, it's not proving to be problematic. So the secret maybe is 3 nights and 4 days. And all their problems just melt away. That is, if your problems are layers of paint on your pre-owned Warhammer 40k miniatures. So I'm going to keep uploading Warhammer 40k on a budget videos. Because I've got a lot of content ideas strung up. Just that RL priorities are not allowing me to post as much as I wanna. But yes, yeah, stay tuned to this channel. Because I'm going to upload more videos for you guys. Man, this is beautiful. This solves all my problem. As I mentioned in part 2, David's fine. Because uh, David, uh, the owner of Ravenstag Creative Studios, you can see their Facebook page on, of course, Facebook, recommended Pine Sol to me. And this thing has been so far a boon. I've, and I've said in part 2 that I can now continue being a cheapskate and keep ordering from eBay. Except for this one, because I need several things from certain boxes. Because I want to complete a Death Guard kill team with which to fit my Eldari kill team against. Because I've heard those things are super combat competitive. Like, they don't go down easy. So I'm trying to balance things by, you know, buying a kill team that's very squishy like these Eldari miniatures here. And balance them out with the most, the slowest, lumbering, most durable kill team in the game, which is the Death Guard. So that should ensure that I have variety. Even if I'm just playing in my own house with uh, relatives and friends. But for all others, I'm going to order off eBay. And then maybe that will prove beneficial to you guys too. For those of you who are looking for Warhammer on a Budget videos. Did I pronounce that right? Warhammer on a Budget. I pronounce that as Budget Budget. Forgive the weird accent, because English is not my native language, of course, being a Southeast Asian. But I do try, I do try. One of the reasons why I've started doing YouTube videos is that I'm trying to improve my speaking skills, because I'm a writer by profession, but when I speak, that's another story altogether. I fumble for words, stuff like that. That's really, really very bad. Especially, you know, if you're in a manager's meeting and you don't know what to say. <laughs> because your mind plays, I don't know. If I write, I'm very, very much lucid, lucid, logical. I know what to type. But when I speak, it's not even because I get embarrassed or anything like that. Although I do have a serious case of stage fright. But even if I'm comfortable with a person, I'm not really that... What's the term? Vociferous? That's a very strange thing about me. Weird, eh? Anyway, let's rinse this out. Oh man, this thing has several patches on him. But yeah, it's still, it's still done because we're seeing glorious Games Workshop Grey. Excuse me. Why am I burping? I hope it's not from the solvent. No, this thing is just a um, cleaner and it doesn't even say anything about fumes or stuff. It just says that if, uh, if you have sensitive skin, you might want to don gloves if you're going to work for a protracted amount of time. With uh, the stuff. I don't have a sensitive skin, but I don't have sensitive skin, but yeah. 
just being paranoid old me so I'm wearing gloves this part here is stubborn like maybe it needs another night anyway if once we if we ever manage to get this white stuff from his the, from the side of his face wait, wait that sounds wrong we're going to move to the other figure the last one I think because the other parts are what's the term elementary like it's obvious that they're going to come off there oh oh man Oh man, wait, I'm going to take this thing off camera and I'm going to see if I can scratch it off with my fingernails, I mean with my hands. Sorry about that. Yeah, but like I've said, I need to have a firmer uh, monopod. Get better. Wait, what the hell? I'm going to take the, take one of my gloves off and then see if I can see if I can pry the paint off with my fingernails. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's very soft and rubbery. Yeah, I can. I can. I'm going to take it off camera. Excuse me for a moment. Yeah, he has laid on. Thick. There you go. There's actually a layer of primer underneath. Ebus. The horrors these guys have been through. But yeah, it's it's it it's coming off. So I'll just clean this off off cam. Maybe I'm going to like I, like yeah, like what I've said, a wooden stick could do. Or are there still two? I think there are still. Two. Okay, here's the axe arc. So I thought this thing was quite plastic, but I think that that was another coat of primer. It's showing black. Oh no, wait, it, that's from another miniature. Yep, it's coated in white primer. I should be careful with this thing because it's a lot of details that the other Dire Avengers does, do not have. Yep, it's the the gray thing is coming off pretty much. You know, I should do an ASMR video of me stripping paint off miniatures. I'm stripping paint off miniatures right now. You can hear the brush. Going through the plastic. Workshop. Now going to uh, clean double Avenger Shuriken. So now I don't know if it's being picked off by the OBS compression film. This is my first time. To <laughs> uh, what? Yeah. What the heck? Maybe maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do an ASMR. Uh, stripping paint off plastic miniature video <laughs> anyway guys so yeah it's effective this here is the xarx legs so yeah you've just seen me strip paint off warhammer 40k miniatures so if you like this video please like share comment like uh, this has been retroburn stay cool Stay frosty. So stay tuned because we're going to unbox this $165 package from Games Workshop. And there are a lot of goodies inside. So yeah, stay tuned. Stay cool guys. Stay frosty.